Hello and welcome to Physician Perspectives, The Gut World, Episode 3. In the last episode, I spoke about the gut-associated lymphoid tissue called GALT, G-A-L-T. In this episode, I'd like to speak about the development of GALT. The gut is complex, so here are bits and pieces of this complex world. My presentations are based on published information that are available in the public domain. I will have an image of the article over here as well as the reference to the article in pretty much every slide. I had this image on earlier in episode 2. I bring it up again just to impress upon you that the gut associated lymphoid tissue or the GALT is strewn all over the uh, gut. So they are physically uh, present as crypto patches, isolated lymphoid follicles, pious patches, cecal patches, colonic patches, mesentric lymph nodes, as well as ectopic lymphoid tissue that can develop anywhere between the stomach and the colon. I'm going to discuss this article, Developmental Significance of Early Gut Associated Lymphoid Tissue, Microbiota Interactions in Health and Disease, Creating Balance Between Tolerance and Inflammation in Children. It's very important to understand that the development of the, of the tissue or the, of GALT happens when you're born, right? So it's important to understand that the establishment of the gut microbiota or the, the living organisms in the gut commences at birth and involves the highly organized interactions between microorganisms, the immune processes orchestrated by the gut and a selective absorption to the blood regulated by the gastrointestinal barrier. The gastrointestinal barrier is extremely important because that is a barrier that lies between the contents of the gut and the gut itself, the blood vessels and all the other tissue of the gut. In term infants, the initial colonization of gut microorganisms depends on the maturation of the GALT and critical closure of the GIB or the gastrointestinal barrier. And these interactions lead to the establishment of symbiotic conditions defined as a balance between immunity and infections. The GALT is anatomically developed at birth in term infants but matures functionally through the interactions with the microbiota or the contents of the gut. Now, the timing of the first gut closure occurs during the first 48 hours after birth decreasing gut intestinal barrier permeability. Now, compared to term infants, in preterm infants or premature infants, the anatomy of the GALT is less complete at birth and the GIB closure is delayed. And this impacts gut microbiota colonization, leading to something called as dysbiosis. So in a full-term infant where symbiosis happens, there is rapid GALT maturation at birth. Oral tolerance happens because of a balance between Th1 and Th2 types of cells and I'll talk about this in another episode. Gut closure happens within 48 hours after birth. There's a decreasing permeability of the gastrointestinal barrier epithelium, the lining. There's an increased inflammatory response to pathogens as well as a possibility of an increasing divergence of the organisms that live in the gut, the microbiota. Now you can compare this to a premature infant where dysbiosis happens and dysbiosis is because of a delayed maturation of the GALT and oral intolerance, a delayed gut closure, an increased permeability of the gastrointestinal barrier and a decreased inflammatory response to pathogens with a low divergence of microbiota. 
So it is seriously very important to have a state of symbiosis and not dysbiosis. And so the developmental processes of the GALT is crucial because that sets the stage for health. That sets the stage for increase in divergence of the microbiota, the living organisms in the gut. It sets the stage for the interaction of these living organisms with us because of a healthy gastrointestinal barrier. And the interactions will take us into the next level of immunity as well as health. So let's look at the broad-based functions of the gall, the gut-associated lymphoid tissue and why such a big fuss is made about the symbiotic uh, situation of the GALT and why it is important. Because the GALT is important in the identification of pathogens from non-pathogenic organisms or antigens and defense against pathogens. The lumen of the GI, human GI tract is colonized by a broad spectrum of symbiotic bacteria that plays a crucial role in the proper development and functioning of the organism. So it's important to keep the symbiotic bacteria happy and healthy. So it's important to recognize them in the first place and not kill them. Furthermore, the intestines come in contact with dietary antigens, the food that we eat, which are foreign to immune system and so we need to have a balance there as well. Developmental dysbiosis may be a risk factor for many diseases and here are just a few of them. Necrotizing colitis, inflammatory bowel disease, which is very common, autoimmune diseases of all kinds, as well as neurodevelopmental diseases such as autism spectrum disorder. Thank you for your time. Please subscribe as well as look forward to the episodes that are being lined up. Very interesting ones. Thank you.